Hi, my name is Jay Duffner, and I'm from Momenta Pharmaceuticals. I've been developing surface plasmon resonance assays for about seven years now. We use the Proteon XPR36 instrument in our lab. Please listen to this tutorial on the use of the HTG sensor chip for the analysis of polyhistidine tagged proteins and antibody interactions. Um, so I'll be talking the second half of the program about the HTG sensor chip, which is used for histidine tagged proteins. But I'll start off with an introduction about the proteon system, how it works, how surface plasma and resonance assays work. Okay, so I'll begin. So surface plasma and resonance, otherwise known as SPR, um, there's a number of different companies that make these types of instruments, and they all work on a very similar um, um, method. There's a uh, metal surface onto which a, uh, one molecule is conjugated, and then there's a second molecule in solution that binds to that molecule that's um, bound to the uh, metal surface. It's used for measuring affinity or getting KD. It's used for um, interaction kinetics. Um, you can so actually get the on rate and the off rates of interactions. Um, you can use it to get inhibition contents, uh, constants, um, stoichiometry, and it can even be set up to do thermodynamics. But in addition, in, addition just to, in addition to affinity, it can be used in many different ways. You can use it for epitope mapping, for um, measuring selectivity and specificity of interactions, for doing concentration analysis, and even for doing enzyme reaction kinetics. Types of molecules you can work with, small molecules, proteins, nucleic acids, sugars, Anything that you can bind to a sensor chip will produce an, um, a signal when you have an interaction. Um, and it's uh, used in concert with other methods such as ultra analytical ultrasonification, um, ITC, FRET assays, thermal shift assays, um, scintillation proximity assays. So there's a number of different choices for how to measure biomolecular interactions. So it works like this. There is a gold layer. There's a prism on the back of the gold layer. Polarized light hits the gold layer and then reflects to a detector. On the other side of the gold layer is a flow channel where you have your interaction taking place. The light hits this uh, reflective surface at a number of different angles. And there's a particular angle at which the light energy gets coupled and leaves the system. So when you look at the reflected light, there's going to be a dim spot or a hole in the, um, in the reflective light. And if I take this detector and I flip it over here, right over here, you can see that there's high light and then there's, then there's a, a low amount of light and, and then it goes back up high again. So this particular angle, this is where the plasmons are, are, are um, being generated from the light. This um, angle at which the plasmon is occurring is affected by the refractive index very near the metal layer. So a change in refractive index will change the, where, this, where this occurs. And so you can see a shift in the SPR signal. So a molecule displacing water when it binds to something that's on the sensor surface will change the refractive index. So basically what you have here is a refractive index sensor. And you can use this refractive index sensor as a surrogate for measuring the binding between molecules. This is a typical sensor gram from an SPR instrument. You have a baseline, and then you introduce your, your molecule in solution, and you see an association, and it comes to equilibrium. Then you switch very quickly to a um, buffer that does not contain your anal, it does not contain your in-solution molecule. And whatever is on the sensor surface dissociates, and you can measure the off rate from this dissociation. Then you regenerate the surface by some method, or you just let it fall off. Sometimes interactions can just fall off so that your surface is ready for the next cycle. OK, the Proteon XPR36. It is a, a pretty innovative flow system where you have six uh, microfluidic channels that can be um, changed to go in a horizontal or a vertical direction. So the cross points of these six flow channels give you 36 detection spots. And it's actually twice that many detection spots, because in between the flow channels, you actually get um, um, an SPR signal as well. The in-between parts are where you don't have any um, ligand bound to the sensor surface. So you actually have um, double 36, um, but you have 36 detection spots that you typically will mobilize protein on. 
So here's how it works. You have your sensor chip here, and you have your six flow channels here. And then they can cross so that you go in the horizontal direction. So um, when you're measuring, uh, this is a typical SPR assay. You first activate the surface using EDC or NHS or some kind of activating chemical. You then flow over your ligand. That gets immobilized to the sensor surface. You then deactivate using ethanolamine or some kind of inactivating molecule. You then change channels to go in the horizontal direction. And then you can flow over your analyte. And in this way, you can measure 36 different interactions at the same time. So you have your molecules bound, then you rinse, and then your molecules um, will dissociate. This is what the sensor grams look like. So you're actually measuring 36 detection spots. This actually shows 36, or six different uh, ligands, uh, sorry, five different ligands and a, and a blank here. And then dissociation. OK, so working with histidine tagged proteins. Um, you know, histidine tagged proteins usually can be purified, but with nickel NTA. And uh, nickel NTA can also be used on the sensor chip to um, capture these histidine tagged proteins in a pretty stable manner. So Biorad has developed a HTG sensor chip, which has Tris NTA functionalized on the sensor chip. So its surface is activated with nickel. You then flow over your captured histidine tag protein. Both 6x and 10x his work. Um, you perform your an interaction with the analyte in solution. And then you can regenerate with uh, 300 millimolar EDTA or um, an acid regeneration works well too. So advantages of using this particular chip. Um, there are many, many commercial proteins available with his tags. It's one of the most common tags. So it's very nice to access this type of technology. Uh, it's easy to regenerate and to activate. The um, protein is very happy to be in um, the PBS solution that you need to use to immobilize it on the sensor chip, or any buffer for that matter. Uh, and there's no need for regeneration scouting. You don't need to give it, put it in a low pH buffer to directly immobilize to the chip. That's typically what you have to do for direct immobilization. Disadvantages. Tris NTA produces a strong negative charge on the sensor chip. Um, so positively charged proteins can sometimes bond non-specifically, even just to the Tris NTA, because you have that strong carboxylic acid group. Uh, but the real disadvantage here is that many, many proteins and other biomolecules bind non-specifically to the nickel. That's what's been kept this from being op adopted more widely. So if you have an interaction with the Tris NTA, there's a couple things you can do to try to alleviate that. You can try to add surfactant. You can increase the surfactant concentration. Sometimes you can um, make the protein behave a little better, reduce that nonspecific binding a little bit better by adding magnesium chloride to your buffer. But just remember, don't use PBS in that case. You also get precipitates. So that's the real problem, nickel. But we found a little a, a way to work around that. And I'll give you. Um, a little story about how, how we, just, how we um, learned how to work with this. So first, this interaction, it's an antibody interaction with um, his-tagged FC gamma receptors. It's commercially available. So we have three histidine-tagged receptors with, with a low affinity to the ligand that we're measuring. And our analyte, sorry, the analyte that we're measuring. The analyte is an antibody, and it's typically at high concentration, around 5 micromolar um, high concentration, going lower. So when you have things that are in the micromolar range for protein interactions, a lot of times you can run into nonspecific binding. So we want to measure the impacts of structural modifications on these antibodies, the FC receptor interactions. There's a lot of literature around this. Um, and we have multiple antibodies to test, and we have multiple receptors to examine. It's a perfect application for the proteon, since you can test multiple interactions at one time. So, uh, we have a, low a mixture of low affinity and high affinity interactions to examine. So KDs from 0.3 nanomolar to almost 5,000 nanomolar, 5 micromolar. So it's quite a range we work, have to work with. So uh, the way that this assay was set up is we have uh, three receptors captured on the sensor chip in the vertical direction. We have um, a high capture level and a low capture level. The advantage of doing this high and low capture level is because this 
This um, helps to examine artifacts in your assay and make sure that your assay is more robust. Whenever you do these types of experiments, you always want to try multiple ligand immobilization levels because you can, get, you can run into problems with um, divalent interactions and things like that. So we have two different immobilization levels of receptor 1, receptor 2, and 1 of receptor 3. And then we have a blank here. The solution phase protein is then flowed in the horizontal direction. So first thing we did was we didn't try it with the HTG chip first. We just tried it with a normal carboxy, methyl, carboxy um, chip, the G. Um, so, so what we did was we mixed the EDC and NHS to activate the sensor surface. And we tried to directly couple it to the sensor surface in acetate pH 5.0. Then we deactivated the surface with ethanolamine. So we got a lot of receptor on the sensor surface. We got 437 response units, and that should have produced a maximum signal of 1,000 response units, way more than we needed. Uh, but instead, this is what we got. Nothing. So mobilization uh, killed the receptor. So we couldn't use that. So next experiment, we used the HDG chip. So we flowed 10 micromolar nickel sulfate in the vertical direction. We flowed the histagged receptors in PBST. And uh, we created multiple surface densities, uh, in this case, one for each vertical lane. So we have the nickel being put on the chip, and then different levels of the receptor. Here, here actually, this is just buffer. And then we have increasing amounts of the receptor. So you can see that the slope of the capture increases, and the amount of the receptor increases. So then we put our protein, our, our antibody in solution and tried to look at that interaction. And so you start seeing um, binding here. OK, that looks great. Binding looks, wait a second. We don't have any ligand here. So this is all nonspecific binding. That looks terrible. So oops, yeah, horrible, horrible nonspecific binding. So um, one thing we tried was to uh, flow over 100 millimolar EDTA in the horizontal direction to remove the residual nickel. After capturing the receptor, we flowed the EDTA. And this is, this is a blow up of um, that, that EDTA injection. And so you can see that there's something coming off. This, is, this surface doesn't have any ligand on it, so this is only nickel. Each one of these has um, ligand on it. And you can see uh, that the 100 millimolar um, EDTA does not remove any of the receptor that's been captured on the chip. It only removes the nickel. So that's exactly what we were looking for. We didn't expect this. This is really surprising. So now, when we uh, do this interaction, we have the raw data here. This is our uh, surface that doesn't have any receptor on it, and then increasing amounts here to here to here to here to here. We start seeing increasing um, uh, binding of the antibody to this receptor. If we then look at the re reference subtracted data, this looks great. This is our reference surface. No binding at all, and then you get increasing amounts of binding to each of the um, each of the surfaces. So we thought it had, we had it made. But in about 10 minutes, this nice, beautiful interaction turned into this. S same same analyte. We're, we're like, what is going on? Something wasn't stable. What we're thinking is happening is nonspecific binding comes back, and it's time dependent. The um, NTA is actually picking up trace metals in the buffer over time so that over time, your nonspecific binding returns. So what did we do? Put a tiny amount of EDTA into the running buffer. Uh, I think we used uh, 100 micromolar EDTA. And that was enough to chelate whatever was there, and then we didn't get any nonspecific binding anymore. And it looked great. And, and um, we, we did some um, studies to see how robust it is. This is an interaction that happened at time zero. This is an interaction that happened at, at four hours. So we see about a 10% you know, loss in activity over four hours, which is acceptable for the type of assay that we're, we're trying to put together. So that 100 micromolar EDTA in the running buffer was the, uh, the last, last step. And now we have a nice viable assay. 80% of the receptor is active. If I look at the Rmax here compared to what we expected to get, it's always a good thing to look at. And uh, nonspecific binding does not interfere, only 10% loss of activity in three hours. So conclusions. Working with histidine tag proteins in this chip works very well, as long as you know the right procedures. Load nickel on the surface with 10 micromolar nickel sulfate. 
um, add 100 micromolar EDTA to the running buffer to chelate trace metals, and remove residual nickel from the chip uh, using 100 millimolar EDTA. I have a little star here. The, all these interactions were done at 25C. I tried this again at uh, 37C, and I started getting dissociation of the receptor from the sensor surface. So um, it probably can be optimized for 37C. I just haven't gone into that. Um, so that's one note of caution if you are doing physiological temperature interactions. And thumbs up. <laughs>